This is not the only station on the Trent. Uh, it's not the only station built near a coal field, in this case on top of one. You need those essential commodities, coal and water. And down the Trent, the CGB built many big power stations in the 60s and 70s. And I think this one, Rouge Le B, built on the old A station site, was just efficient use of the land. And I think it is one of the last 500 megawatt unit stations that were built. In a power station, making electricity is actually quite simple. You get some coal and burn it in a boiler, make some steam. You take the steam to a turbine, which is a very sophisticated windmill. It's attached to an electrical generator, which makes electricity, and you squirt it out onto the national wire system. However, in reality, as you can see from this central control room, it's a technically highly sophisticated business. If I just think about coal, coal comes into this place today by rail. And there is a little station. The trains come in with some 30 to 50 wagons, each one carrying many, many tons of coal. And as this train moves slowly, the bottoms are opened and the coal falls straight down into a bunker and then straight onto a conveyor belt, which carries it to two places. The most efficient way is for that coal to go straight up to the boiler house. But because you need a stock, there is an alternative way and the belt can carry it to a coal stock on their operators with big scrapers bulldoze the coal about to form a regular stack of coal. When the coal goes straight up to the top of the boiler house, this boiler house is about 200 feet high, the coal falls into bunkers down big chutes and is slotted into six big mills because this coal is pretty poor stuff. You could never light it in a normal fire. So to burn it, it has to be ground to a very fine powder. The coal falls into the mill and gets ground and ground to the consistency of a face powder. And remember, there are tens of tons flowing. And to get it from the mill to the boiler, you blow vast quantities of air through the mill up large ducts into very big nozzles in the front of the boiler, tiers of them. And because the coal is so fine, it burns exceedingly quickly and creates a red hot, a white hot, massive ball of flame releasing its heat. That is then powdered ash, just like face powder. It gets everywhere and there is a big problem, technical problem in containing it. It goes out of the boiler with the smoke uh, through big precipitators which are electrically charged and they capture all the dust. And that dust goes down into bunkers below the precipitators and is actually a good byproduct. It is sold. We've all seen those grey insulation blocks in building, commercial and domestic building. They are made from pulverised ash from power stations. So in my day, the smoke used to go straight up the chimney, but it was discovered there was serious environmental damage. So in this station today, they've built a flue gas cleanup plant at the back end. And that takes all the acidic materials out and then the smoke goes up the chimney. So that's the coal cycle. Now, the boilers, as I say, are about 200 feet tall. They are, in fact, just big structures with the walls being made out of metal tubes which carries water. The heat is given up to the steam 
It's high pressure, uh, about 160 bar pressure. It comes out of the boilers at very high temperature, about 560 degrees centigrade. The steam is taken back into the hottest part of the flame to superheat it so it carries the maximum amount of energy and it's taken to the turbine hall and enters the steam turbine. Now that steam expands its way through the turbine giving up energy and spinning the turbine very fast and disappears into very big condensers. And the reason it goes to condensers, which are big vessels with steam on one side of a set of tubes and cold water from the Trent River, this power station is built on the Trent River, that cold water cools the steam down to water and it gets pumped back to the boiler. But it's very, very pure water. There is on this site a sophisticated chemical treatment plant to make the water pure in fact, it's that pure, you can grow medical cultures in it. And it's needed to be pure to stop corrosion. You need vast quantities of water. You can see the cooling towers. The water from the condensers, which started in the Trent, gets slightly warm. And to recirculate it for reuse, we sprinkle it in the bottom of those big concrete cooling towers. They are shaped like they are to naturally pull in draft at the bottom and as it rises up these tall structures it cools the water that's sprinkled from about 10% of the way up and that cooling allows the water to be pumped back to the condensers. If I come to the turbine whilst it's like a windmill in other words the steam blows onto the blades and it turns round it is, in fact, a number of windmills tied together. There are many, many, many rows of blades. The front end, the metal, is white hot because of the temperature of the steam. As the steam goes through the turbine, it slowly loses its pressure. And at the back end, it's very chilled. It's as low as 50 degrees temperature you know, comfortable hot water temperature. Uh, and the pressure has given way to a vacuum. So here you have this rotating steam turbine, white hot at one end, chilled cold at the other, high pressure at one end, very low pressure at the other, going round at 3,000 revs a minute. In fact, it's going round that fast the biggest blade speed is something like one and a half times the speed of sound and it's rotating in very fine proximity to fixed parts of the turbine so controlling that machine is technically very difficult. Attached to this turbine is a generator and the generator is just a big magnet rotating within a big set of copper coils and if you rotate a magnet fast enough in a set of copper coils electricity is made in the copper coils but this is no ordinary generator it needs to be cooled because electricity is made in such quantities the copper will get hot and it's cooled by water the rotor the magnet can weigh 60 70 tons it's going round at 3,000 revs and it too needs to be cooled and we use hydrogen. I can think of no more difficult combination of materials than high voltage electricity which you make, water to cool it and hydrogen to keep the water cool. So you have a problem of containment of the water and the hydrogen. It's well known, if hydrogen escapes, you could have a serious explosion. If water gets to earth with the copper, you could have an even bigger explosion with the electricity. And we haven't finished there. The electricity can be made at 11,000 volts, but to ship it about the country on the high voltage grid system, 
the higher the voltage, the cheaper it is to move it about. So in fact, we transform the electricity made in the generator up to 400,000 volts and ship it about the country.